All right, how's it going everyone? So I wanted to try to make a video on what I recently did to this newsletter manager application. I don't know what, like, I don't know how to like really introduce these changes. Honestly, I just took some prototype code and I refactored it to make it more clean, All right? Now you could say I kind of applied a clean architecture uh, approach to this. I don't know if I'm fully doing clean architecture, but basically I'm dividing some stuff into layers and I want to kind of walk you through how I did that with my next application that's using TRPC. And maybe you guys can, you know, give me some feedback or you can use this yourself if you think this is useful. And I think what would most exemplify what I'm talking about is show you the diff, right? So using a git diff is a great way to see how code changed over time. And in this particular refactoring, um, you'll see here on the left, this is how the code used to be, right? So this is the old version of the code. On the right is the new version of the code. Now, the main refactoring I did is that this router used to have a subscribe method i think it had an unsubscribe method and it had a compose method and you notice that inside these router functions like it's just a bunch of code right i have a bunch of code that's in here so there's a couple of things that are kind of like wrong about this code in terms of like abstracting away your implementation details from your actual like business logic and on the right basically what i did was instead of having all the code here i pulled that out to a separate file that i call a use case or a separate function called a use case. And again, this use case should not need to know about what this input object is. It shouldn't need to know about anything else that's related to a next or tier PC. It's a simple function that takes in an email address. That's it. Subscribe use case. Now I probably could name this a little bit different. So looking at the subscribe use case, notice that there is no dynamo code in here anymore, right? So if I go back to the diff, remember I had like client.git, like this is a dynamo DB specific function call that was hard coded right into this function, which is not really maintainable because if I decide I don't want to use Dynamo or if I want to use something else, or I want to change the table name. Notice how table name is hard coded here. It's hard coded here. Um, the business logic shouldn't have to know about like how stuff is stored in Dynamo. They shouldn't have to know about the PK and the SK and stuff like that. So the refactoring, um, a little bit more declarative. The code reads more like a book. Right, uh, when the function first loads, I get the subscriptions by email. This is some type of subscription object. And if it exists, I just go ahead and like return early. I don't want to do this logic if there's already a subscription. But if there is no subscription already for the email address, I make a, a UID. I save that subscription by basically linking the email to the subscription ID. And then I send out an email. So this code, hopefully you can see it's much easier to read than this code, right? This is what it used to look like before. This is how I got a subscription. I check it to see if it exists. I put a record, put a record. I send out an email. And look at all this code that used to be basically coded right into this, uh, this function call. So not the most maintainable. This code that you're looking at right now, a lot cleaner, a lot more maintainable. And basically you want this use case, you can call it interactor, you can call it like your business controller. I don't, I don't really know. Call it what you want to call it, but basically this thing shouldn't need to know about your database implementation detail. It shouldn't have to know like you're using SES under the hood. Those things should be abstracted like one level away. And I think it makes the code a lot cleaner to understand. Okay, so just at a high level, I can read through this. And this same approach I did for the other use cases as well, right? So if I look at the unsubscribe use case, I get the subscription using the subscription ID. If it doesn't exist, I return. If it does, I remove it and then I return success, right? So again, I don't need to know how this thing is getting deleted from DynamoDB. I just need to know that I call a method and somehow it's removed from my database, right? I don't know what my database is. I don't know how to remove it from the database. I just know that I can call this. Now you might say, well, how is this different from like if I was using Mongoose or anything? Um, well, again, like if you're using Mongoose here, you probably have like a subscription model. You might do like a remove on it like this. Um, which is fine, but you kind of have Mongoose hard-coded into your business logic, which means that your business logic knows you're using MongoDB, right? So that could kind of be a smell, and that's why I like to have at least one layer of abstraction away from, like, those type of things. Now, let's just go ahead and show the very last use case. So this is com Compose. This is basically an endpoint I call that basically sends out a bunch of emails to everybody. Um, looking here, I get all the subscriptions, and then for every single one, I just send out an email, and then I return success, right? So it's a nice declarative way to write the functions. It makes sense. And this is how I would recommend that you try to write your backend code. It should be very clear what's going on. This stuff should not know about next. 
didn't know about Express.js. It shouldn't have a request object. It shouldn't have a response object. It should have the bare minimum inputs and give the bare minimum outputs so that the thing wrapping your use case, all right, the handler or whatever you want to call it, can just set the headers based on what's returned and read the request information based on the request from the router. Now this is beneficial. If I decide I don't want to use uh, my, I don't want to have my API kind of hard coded in the next, it's very easy for me to basically pull out these functions and I can use this on any type of, you know, node or TypeScript based API, right? I could just pull these out and just call them and they have a very, very clean, simple interface that I can invoke and assume that it's going to work. Now there's some more stuff I need to do basically to allow a lot of these persistence, lower level methods to be injected. I like to do function injection here to have like some of these methods passed in. Haven't gone around to that, but I might do that. Some people like using some type of like container or like a dependent uh, inversion of control system, the dependency injection system. I just like doing in the actual function itself. Like I would probably just have to pass in uh, remove subscription there so that it's not it's not knowledgeable of that it doesn't know about that like that. So this is how I might do it in the future. Um, looks a little strange, but it just makes it a lot easier to test because then I can write a unit test over this without having to do like a just mock on this import statement. This stuff is really hard coded, coded and coupled to the DynamoDB function calls. But instead I could potentially have this require an interface and do all this other extra work that you may say is over engineering. And it probably is for a simple little application like this, but it's kind of beneficial as your project gets a little bit larger. You gotta have some patterns that you follow to make stuff easier to understand. So let's look at like one of these get subscription by IDs. Um, basically what it does, it takes in a simple, interface like a string and it knows how to basically query that from DynamoDB, right? Somehow it knows how to use a PK and an SK to grab that. It returns it, it returns the type and that's how that's being used. Um, and then the actual DynamoDB part of the logic, I wrapped again and yet another function to abstract away and kind of make the hard coded stuff like the table name come from a shared place. And I also kind of removed the need to know like when you do a Dynamo get request, it returns an object that has an item in capital I. I. I don't want like my business logic or my persistence layer to have to worry about that and know about that. So I kind of wrapped all that stuff so that when I do a get request, I know I'm going to get back a single Dynamo record. Um, so that's what I've been kind of working on on this project, just trying to make the code a little bit cleaner. Um, again, the send email function, basically I made it so every time I send out an email, it puts an unsubscribe link at the bottom of the HTML or the text so that if this system were to ever send out an email to one of my subscribers there's always a unsubscribe button that they can click or a link they know how to get to so that my emails aren't like you know complained against people don't complain about my emails and put into a spam folder i want them to actually know that hey they have a way to like get this off of their inbox uh, another thing i did on this project is i wanted to set this up so that I can run all this locally and not have to depend on Amazon at all, right? So what I did was I pulled in a couple of packages. Let me go ahead and show you that. Um, I pulled in a way to basically run a local SES mail server, which is actually pretty cool. Um, if I show you that real quick, when I try to like use the application, it's going to send emails and it's going to send them to this service that's running on port like 9001. And I can see that this thing gets emails and it actually writes out the emails to an output folder. So as I you know subscribe, actually I could probably show you this real quick. If I go here, I was going to type in like a ttt at gmail.com, click subscribe. You'll see that this prints out an email saying that, hey, I just sent out an email, ttt at gmail.com. And it actually puts out, puts out a, uh, um, some text here, right? Right, it shows the headers and whatnot. So this is a pretty cool local service that I can use. And the importance of this, why I'm doing this, is that I can actually start writing some integration tests and Cypress tests that'll click through the UI and then check this folder and verify that, hey, when someone actually types into this input box and clicks subscribe, does the system try to send out an email? And I could just simply check the file system to verify that and not have to like mock out a bunch of stuff and have like some just uh, spies going on. I could just check the file system and say, hey, I just sent out an email. Output folder was blank before. Now it should have a folder with a timestamp and it should have a body. That body should have some type of unsubscribe link in the text format. And also in the HTML format, there should be an unsubscribe link. 
Okay, so now I'm setting this up for like being able to do great integration testing. And the second thing I kind of did was I brought in DynamoDB local. So if you look here, I have a script called run Dynamo. And now I have the ability to basically run a local Dynamo table so that I don't have to connect to a real Amazon instance whenever I want to do real development. Everything is isolated away from the real production like Amazon services and I can just do all my development locally, just restart the database if I want to, clear it out. Um, I'm using a package called DynamoDB local and you can basically just launch a child process like this and that'll set up a local database and then I also create a table called webdevjunkie underscore newsletter. Um, in fact, while I'm here, I should probably actually say table name and probably pull this in from that shared location. I think in Dynamo, I have this. Let me just export this. It's good to make sure that your stuff is like, you don't have like magic numbers everywhere. Now, I would even take that a step further and the table name should probably come from the environment variable in case you want to change your table uh, when you do a deployment or something, but that's probably good enough for right now. This is just a little side project. Um, yeah, so I guess the whole point of all this is that even though like this project is small and it's a little side project, it's always good to come back and make sure that you're trying to do stuff, quote unquote, the professional way. You can just keep on hacking stuff onto your project, but at some point you're gonna start encountering friction that makes it really hard to add new features and you'll change stuff in one file and think that you've, you know, fixed a bug, but it's actually a bunch of other files that you copied and pasted code everywhere. So I like to let my code grow organically. And I don't do this premature like optimization until I get past this like rapid prototype stage. But when the project actually seems that it's more like production ready, that's when you need to actually start refactoring your files and your follow some type of structure. If you could do it from the get go, like you could just start off the project having a controllers file maybe like a persistence file and stuff like that. Um, but I just like to let stuff grow organically. But um, yeah, other than that, I think that's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this project. I think I'm pretty happy with the state of this project. I'm going to go ahead and commit this. And uh, you all can always check it out if you want to. Let's just go to a new terminal. And I'm going to go ahead and just say git add. Actually, let me make sure I don't have any secrets stored anywhere. I don't think I do. And I don't have like a list of emails that people could potentially look at oh here's another one i have table name hard coded there so let's go ahead and pull in table name All right sometimes you like just start coding and then like you're like oh i'll go back and fix that later but then you never actually go back and you have like this stuff copied everywhere so here's an example of like where i started copying table name everywhere which probably isn't a good um, approach there's oh there's another script i added called the import script basically this emails i json has a list of a bunch of emails that were already existing on my mailchimp um, subscriptions so i think like i have like 250 emails of people subscribing to mailchimp but again i wanted to do my own type of approach to a newsletter so i imported those emails and i want to basically import them into my existing system so i wrote a simple script to basically loop over all those emails and just insert them into my uh, dynamodb table so that i could potentially just use them when i want to send out emails uh yeah so that's about it if you guys uh, enjoyed this little walkthrough or I don't know what this is but if you enjoyed me talking about this project leave me a thumbs up leave me a comment subscribe press the bell icon and like always feel free to join my discord if you want to talk to me directly or just find a place to chat with other developers and uh, ask for help if you get stuck on things have a good day and happy coding